Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, today we're going to unbox our seeds for the season and I wanted to share this moment with you. Uh, I have been waiting for quite a while to ask for seeds. In fact, I wanted to have the seeds for the 21st of December, which is the winter solstice uh, as if to let's say mark the beginning of the new agricultural year and the seeds were a present for the land and I wanted to share the, the seeds as well with some friends so that was m my main purpose uh, to ask them before Christmas so that we can have them as Christmas present in the end it turned out that I asked for them later uh, and it was good I had uh, time to research for the varieties that I wanted and as well uh, have a clearer plan of what I wanted to do in the garden. So I'm going to tell you today about my plan. Uh, since we have the packets without being opened yet, uh, I'm gonna dive into them. I've been so impatient um, because as I told you my plan was to receive them and get them all opened and gifted to people but in the end it didn't turn out that way. Uh, deliveries were a little bit delayed and in fact uh, it was good that I ordered them in that gap between Christmas and New Year because now um, one of the seed companies that I ordered to is not accepting orders so I'm so happy uh, and I'm gonna go and start unboxing uh, so the first company is uh, a Portuguese company um, they're based in Oliveira do Hospital I, I don't get anything uh, from that I'm not a uh, uh, a representative of theirs or anything. I have grown some of their seeds. They're quite good and they have a lot of um, bio varieties too. So uh, let's get and open it. I'm really bad at this, but I'm so excited. <laughs> um, so, um, I've ordered well, I have several things ordered. Um, some of them are perennials and the others are like short-lived perennials or others are supposed to be able to perennialize. So for example, um, I've chosen um, several onion um, varieties. Um, I have Allium fistulosum, that is in this case, as they call it, cebolino. Um, I've got the white Lisbon variety um, that it says that it can be perennialized. Um, I have some Belleville. Um, this is like it, it's not a chart, but yeah, uh, I wanted to try these ones. Then I have this one, Allium fistulosum. Uh, it is another type of spring onion. Love it, which I really wanted to try. Um, then I have this one that is Allium ursinum. This is like wild garlic. I really wanted to try and 
Um, in fact, I'm not looking to try this in our plot. Uh, I know it won't be very um, appropriate because uh, our allotment is in full sun, but I'm looking forward to when I can plant this in our future home. And this is why I have two of those, hopefully around trees, we can use them. Uh, then I have California poppies, um, a cardoon, rhubarb, I have an oriental baby leaf mix, which is for a friend of mine. And then I have ordered uh, perpetual spinach. I have read mixed opinions about this, whether it can be, whether it's really perpetual. Uh, even if it's only for two seasons, it's okay for us. Uh, in the allotment, chart wasn't hugely successful. We brought some chart plants in last February. Their leaves never got to be really big. And in general, most of the things in our allotment weren't quite good. Um, I mean, their, their growth weren't quite good, uh, wasn't quite good. The problem is, uh, some of our neighbors have told us that maybe uh, they have observed a similar phenomena, like uh, lack of growth in certain parts of their allotments. So probably it might have been a pesticide problem too. So we, I don't know, <laughs> we, we've tried. Uh, we've put a lot of uh, organic matter, uh, some horse manure, uh, worm castings. We haven't overdone it, it's true. We have neighbors that all the time fertilize, we don't do that. And I think with the heat and the drought that we had last year as well, it, it wasn't maybe the best for the soil. Maybe you will have wonderful vegetables but it wasn't the best for the soil or this is what we felt so so we've been trying to think of more rustic plants that can uh, maybe perennialize or we can get them to reseed as we did with our chicories last year so um so that let's say the soil can recover in its own rhythm um so I'm going to continue <laughs> getting on through this. Uh, so we've got perpetual spinach. Uh, some people say it grows really well. Uh, some people say it bolts. I am very curious about that and trying this. I've been uh, wanting to try it for years. Uh, so this is one of the things that I am really excited about. Uh, and uh, as well, I have uh, Tigerella. This is a tomato variety that I have never tried and uh, it looks quite interesting. Um, Ishikura long white, that is uh, an onion that can be perennialized too, as they say. And I have two of these. Um, I have some nasturtiums or yeah, trupe, trupe majus. I really don't know. I'm really bad at this. I don't know how to say that. But uh, I love nasturtiums. Uh, they're, I, I love their taste. I know a lot of people say that the texture of the leaves, it's too slimy. But we really like them. We've tried them. Uh, we've eaten the pots, we've eaten the flowers and we've eaten the leaves. Uh, and I continue... Um, to have those in the garden. Uh, last year I didn't have them and I'm really sorry about it uh, because they might have been a good fit. Now, this year it will be. And then I asked for a, more daikon radishes. We weren't very successful with them. I'm gonna tell you about it in another video. It was so unfortunate. We had a uh, uh, like a turnip maggot uh, let's see how how this is called like it's a turnip gall uh, something uh, it is an unpleasant 
thing to find in your radishes and we had it I had to take all of them out I'm gonna tell you about this in another video and now let's unbox the other one and then I'm gonna tell you what my plan is for uh, all these seeds so this one uh, is a different company uh, this one doesn't come from Portugal uh, actually I don't know where am I supposed to open it so, like, which way should it be uh, this is from Cedaholic uh, it is a company that I've wanted to try for years and um, actually um, maybe now it was the best moment but uh, well I think all the moments are good to ask for seeds but maybe yeah uh, maybe the moment now was the best uh, because our plans for the um, uh, allotment has changed and asking for more seeds uh, and for more different seeds was something that I really wanted to do for a long time so let's see if I can get this to open this I really don't know if I'm doing it right maybe not but that's okay oh we're there oh goodness I'm so excited so first um, this is the same thing uh, they don't uh, I won't get anything from them, uh, but you can see wonderful package. Um, you have full instruction like what you've ordered and everything with your price, the receipt. Um, then you have the packing sheet, everything very professional and they have this wonderful envelope that you can seal if you wish uh, I don't know them I have just heard that their seeds were good uh, from other people who grow uh, they have they come with full instructions so for example here we have Orac uh, I have wanted for years to try this uh, plant and you can see it comes like with this really neat um, information uh, leaflet it's great actually I've never seen anything like this and then here you've got the seeds uh, oh my god this is beautiful um, I'm so excited so I've got um, Orac I ordered uh, some unusual varieties I've never grown any of these uh, and I wanted to try at least a couple of plants of each. Uh, I want to sow them directly in the garden. Uh, and apart from that, kind of try to see if they can reseed and not perennialize because in the end they're annual plants, but if they can reseed and we can continue having that as a let's say a space uh, that self-regulates more than we regulate it I would like to try that so that I can see if I can replicate that afterwards in a larger plot uh, and yeah I've chosen varieties that I think might fit that purpose so these are more uh, auric plants uh, this one is uh, one of them is the green and the other one is like mixed um, then I have the chop suey greens I ordered two and actually they are like it's so sweet they're looking they come with all this information and then the package the pack of seeds that is so sweet uh, some of these I've ordered too because I'm sharing with a friend and I really wanted to offer her some unusual vegetables uh, so yeah 
here we are that's a perilla or shiso um, I have another shiso variety that is like uh, green and red on the underside they didn't have the red shiso which I tried dried here in Portugal from a woman that has like herbal teas uh, I really like the aroma of red shiso uh, we only could try dried but um, Oh man, I have never tried anything like this before. So th this was something very surprising and I wanted to grow it. They didn't have uh, the seeds for red shiso, so I tried, it, I tried to order the green one. So um, we have the red, we have some plants uh, dried that we bought. Um, so now we're gonna try to grow the other one. I, it's not my first time growing shiso. I ordered a couple of years ago, two years ago, I ordered seeds from another seed company, a Spanish seed company, uh, but I weren't at all successful growing any of them, like I had green and red, and uh, I just didn't get the seeds to grow, I couldn't get them to grow, I wasn't very experienced, I am not as experienced now either, uh, but I'm trying hard. and. Uh, uh, none of their seeds grew really well actually so um, I wrote an email to complain I didn't get any answer that was well it was an experience uh, so let's get back to down to these ones um, then I have amaranth uh, I have a couple of varieties actually I love I totally love this one uh, we had it uh, grow in our previous garden. It was so good. Uh, so I've ordered seeds again. And I have another red amaranth. And another green one. So we're going to have green, red and the one that is green and red. I'm so excited. I, I can't wait to plant this. It's too early now. But um, then I've got the uh, Japanese bunching onion that is um, Kyoto market. I hope we can get all, the, all of these onion varieties to perennialize. I don't know how we do that. I have never done it. I've never grown onions. I have grown leeks with some success. I have never grown onions, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, then I've got Claytonia or my nurse lettuce. Uh, I am quite excited about that too. Uh, this is for a plan for our future property, hopefully this year. Then, uh, yeah, uh, this is one of our, oh goodness, the seeds are huge. I don't know, this, this is so exciting. Uh, this is like a perennial kale. Uh, it is called sea kale, lily white. Um, it is like this. Uh, and wow, <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, then I've ordered a herb that apparently is not very common. Uh, it's called Tanacetum balsamita or Cosmari. The uh, let's say how they explained about the plant and the uses of it seem to me quite interesting, and I'm gonna try to grow it from seed. A lot of people say that you don't even have to try to grow this from seed, but I don't have a place where I can get plants from here, so it's always worth the try. Yeah, you will always learn more. Um, a strawberry, a wild strawberry, European woodland strawberry. Um, then I have found, um, wow, I have read about this uh, plant, very mixed reviews. 
Turkish Rocket. Uh, some people who do permaculture love it. Some people don't. Uh, it uh, has uh, some bad com comments as if it's like a noxious weed. Um, I suppose all the plants out of control are noxious weeds, even if, you, if there are artichokes or something like this. Uh, so I am... Um, I've ordered this, I'm not gonna plant it in our allotment, uh, I'm looking forward to maybe finding our next property this year and um, uh, I wanted to have a plant that is maybe more reliable, drought resistant because conditions here are changing really fast or climatic conditions are not very good. Uh, we've had enormous amounts of rain. Now we've had a couple of weeks uh, with minus one zero degrees centigrade. So I really don't know how climate is going to be in Portugal in the future. So this is like a B, plan B. Um, then uh, wasabi, wild rocket. I can't say that I really needed this, but this was a cap price. I really like wasabi and I love rocket too. I wanted to try something like this. It is something that it was like a small Christmas present for me. Um, a chili pepper, mulato isleño. Uh, the name was quite interesting. It's not too spicy. Um, so. I'm gonna, probably this will be the only pepper that I will try to grow this year. Uh, the other ones, I might buy them as tarts. Uh, but yeah, this will be the only one that I'm gonna try to grow from seed. It seemed very interesting to me. Um, then, yeah, and this is something else that I was so excited about. It's called the Edible Garden Flowers and Herbs Mix. This is actually, a 25 gram packet uh, and it has uh, well it says major components include uh, calendula, monarda, perilla, tajetes, uh, we have agastache, allium, several alliums, carm carvi, diplotaxis, uh, hisopus officinalis, uh, there are quite a lot, several basil, salvia, thyme and parsley and oregano too. So this should be like, oh my god, I would really like to try, to try this. These are 25 grams because they didn't have the um, lead, like a small quantity. Uh, I'm happy I got this one actually, it looks really exciting. Then I have a Pak Choi color crunch that is a salad leaf mix. Uh, this is probably a present for a friend. Uh, and yeah, uh, I really wanted to gift her something like that. And then I have this plant. It says it's called the Tooth Ache plant. I, re I don't know if I can try this. Spilantis acmelia. acmelia. It's called the electric daisy. Uh, I wanted to have this one too. It seems very interesting and I'm quite excited to try to grow it. Uh, burdock. This is a Japanese root, a traditional Japanese root. Um, and I'm gonna share the seeds with a friend. Then I've got the poached egg plant. I For several years I've had my eyes on this. Uh, it actually looks really interesting to me. Uh, and uh, according to what I know, flowers are edible. I don't know, but yeah, I have to see about that. But uh, I am quite excited. Uh, and this is why I ordered it. Uh, it is something that I don't really need, but it's a good bee plant. And apart from that, 
well, it's beautiful and it's a flower, so you can always um, have something like this. And then another one that I'm that it's for more perennial systems, sweet woodruff um, or Gallium odoratum. We do use uh, in salads the, I suppose, the cousin of this, <laughs> Gallium aparine. Uh, that is uh, something that we normally use in salads. Uh, so I wanted to try to grow this one, not in our allotment, hopefully in our new property, if we're lucky this year. Uh, and yeah, this is to unboxing and I'm gonna tell you our plan for this, uh, for all these seeds in a moment. Thank you for joining me and I wish you all the best. Have a wonderful week. Keep growing.